Apple Reminders is getting a long-awaited feature, calendar integration. Nice. You'll be able to create, view, edit, and delete reminders right in the calendar app. And in iOS 18 and macOS Sequoia, there's also some other small updates to the Reminders app. Let me show you. Here we're looking at reminders on iPad and we're looking at the today list and you'll see that I have some reminders scheduled for today. Now, because they're scheduled for today, if I head over to the calendar app, I'm going to see those reminders here at the top. They're under the all day section because I haven't assigned a specific time to them yet. If I switch over to the day view, you'll see that the reminders are listed here as well. I can tap one and then I can see some information about it. And I can also tap show in reminders and I'll see the reminder in the reminders app itself. If I just head back to the calendar, then I can also check this item off here or uncheck it. Oh, nice. If there are subtasks, it asks if I want to complete those. I hadn't seen you those yet. That's nice. I'll cancel this for now, but that's how that works. And I can also edit the reminder in here, add notes, add a URL, set the date and time, early reminders, repetition, all kinds of things. Okay. All the same things that you can do in the reminders app, even work on the subtasks right here. Now, this is cool, but of course we want to be able to manipulate these things. So if I head over to the week view, what I can do is I can go over to Saturday and you see that I have a check-in and accountability session with people who previously took one of my live courses. So what I'm going to do is I need to prepare for that session a little bit. Let's say I want to do that Saturday earlier in the day before I do this, but I don't know what time yet. So I'll just tap right here and create a new reminder. So now when you long tap, you're going to see that you can add an event or a reminder. And I'm going to choose add reminder over here. And I'm just going to say prepare for OYL, organize your life, check in. And you'll see that it suggests a list as I'm doing this. Now the list suggestion isn't very good. Business is actually good. So I'll tap that. Now this is automatically gonna get assigned to the business list, okay? I'm gonna do this Saturday, no repeat business list, add. Now this shows as a reminder. And of course, if I go back to the reminders app and I go over to the scheduled view over here and I scroll up to Saturday, that reminder lives here as well. Now, what if I want to add a reminder at a specific time? I would like to weigh myself tomorrow at 7 a.m. just to, you know, check in on my weight. And I'm just gonna write weigh myself and make that a reminder instead of a event. And in this case, I will assign that to the health list Tomorrow at 7 a.m., okay. And now you'll see that this reminder gets listed over here. And of course, I can go ahead and drag it around. And I can also do that with other tasks, with tasks that are assigned to a day but don't have a time yet. I can, of course, also drag around other reminders that don't have a time assigned yet. For example, this schedule a haircut reminder here today. I can just go ahead and drag that from Thursday to Friday. Now it lives there. Now, one interesting related change to showing your reminders in the calendar is the following. If I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my reminders app and I go over to the today view and I just long press a task, now you'll see that there is an option called deadline. Previously, this was called date and I believe it may have even been called due date in the past. So Apple is kind of changing this a little bit. But interestingly, if you actually tap on a task like this and then tap the I button, it's still only called date here. But long press shows you deadline. And I think this is part of maybe Apple is struggling with the same things that we're struggling with because I always recommend that to do apps and this is really a to do list app, right? Reminders that they have two different kinds of dates, one for when you think you're going to do something, you'd like to do something, an intent date, and the other for a hard deadline, a due date, right? Those things are not necessarily the same. If you've promised to look over something by Friday, maybe you'd like to do it on Thursday just so you're done ahead of time. Apple Reminders only has one type of date, and here we're calling it the deadline. Is that how we should treat it, though? In the past, I've said, yes, we should actually use the built-in date feature as a hard deadline, to represent a hard deadline. But now, because in the calendar app, I can actually start showing my tasks on the calendar and where they show on the calendar is based on that one date that we have, I actually think we should not treat it as a deadline. Now I recommend treating it as an intent date. If I go back over to the reminders app, you'll see that there's these sections right here, morning, afternoon, and tonight. And by the way, one of the things you can now do that's an update in iOS 18, small one, is I can go and tap on the ellipsis at the top right and just edit the sections. So by default in the built-in today view, what you're gonna see is overdue tasks are gonna live at the top. And then you're gonna have all day tasks that don't have a time assigned, but that are 
do that have a date set to today. And then you're going to have your timed reminders, the ones that have a time broken down by morning, afternoon, and evening. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tasks in my today view and just assign them to morning, afternoon, and tonight. So I can just take one and drag it into morning. Now, when you do that, then Apple Reminders is going to pick a time for you. So in this case, it assigned it to nine. That doesn't really make much sense for me. I'll assign it to a different time. Let's say I'm working on this right now. So one, it's actually not morning. It's going to move it to afternoon. Later today, I'm running the club elections. I'm hosting the club elections for my local Toastmasters club. I've got some notes and I want to review those before the meeting. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to do that at 1600. Uh, I want to schedule a catch-up call with a friend. That's That I don't want to put on my calendar. And later tonight, I want to look into some YouTube stuff. Okay, that doesn't need a time. Now, you'll see that if I go back to the calendar app, you'll see that these two tasks are now listed on my calendar at those specific times. And because it works this way, we should think of this date, which Apple has called a date in the past, I think a due date, and now sometimes a deadline. We should not think of it as the hard deadline. We should think of this as when you'd like to get around to this, when you're planning to get around to this. That way we can use the new calendar integration with the reminders for time blocking and for really doing integrated planning of our week with tasks and events. Now, the integration of reminders into the calendar app is not perfect. It's fantastic to be able to see my reminders on the calendar, but it does get quite crowded over here in the week view. And if I go to the month view, it's getting especially crowded. And even in the day view, it's quite crowded if you're going to have like say 10 tasks that you want to work on today. I also can't show any task duration. So you'll see that these reminders with times assigned are just showing as very thin bars. I can't say, hey, I'm going to work on this for half an hour or one hour, for example. But in the past, you were only able to show reminders on your calendar in third party apps like Fantastical or BusyCal, which are great apps. But now it's lovely that you can do this in the default calendar app. Let me tell you about some other small updates to the reminders app. But before I do that, if you haven't already, now would be a great time to give the video a like if you've been appreciating it and to subscribe and hit the bell icon. One small update is that in smart lists, like in the built-in today list, but also in any custom smart lists that you might like to create, if there is a task that has subtasks like this one right here, now you can tap where it says X subtasks and that actually takes you to the task in the list that it lives in and shows you the subtasks. Previously, it only showed you how many subtasks there were, but you couldn't quickly navigate to it. Now, another thing that's new is all the way at the bottom here under my lists. We've got a recently deleted section. So you can just see any reminders that you've recently deleted. And we also have for grocery lists, where if you add items to the list, they'll automatically get categorized into various sections that kind of represent grocery store aisles. This now supports more languages than just English. Another potential new way that Reminders is getting better is Apple Intelligence. I'm not able to test that out yet because it's not available yet, but I think that Apple Intelligence AI is actually going to be able to make Reminders a lot more useful. Imagine if Siri or Apple Intelligence can look through your notes app and see which action items are in there with checkboxes that you haven't checked off yet. Imagine if it could read your emails and it is going to be able to do these things and then automatically create to-do lists or at least suggest to-do lists for you in the reminders apps. It could say, hey, your boss emailed you and needs this report by Thursday. Shall I add it to your to-do list for Wednesday so that you get it done on time? Wouldn't that be amazing? Apple has this unique advantage from being so integrated with all of its apps that it does have this AI that can look at your various apps and accounts with different information in there and collate that analyze it, and then do these useful things of creating, for example, a suggested to-do list for you. I'd love to see that. We haven't heard anything about this yet. I do think that's where we're going in the future. By the way, there's also supposedly some new updates to the Reminders app in terms of shortcuts that are available in Apple Shortcuts app. I personally think that the Shortcuts app is going to become less and less relevant for everyday users because we're going to be able to naturally talk to Apple Intelligence, to the AI, you know, the way we'd speak to another human, the way we'd speak to each other and just tell it what we want it to do. So if this happens, do that. So I'm very excited about the possibilities that are coming with Apple Intelligence. I think they're really going to make Apple's apps even more interconnected with each other and you're gonna get even more reward out of using all of Apple's native apps together or at the very least apps that use Apple's APIs and frameworks and 
are able to say, for example, this is a to-do list, these are your notes, and anyway, I think this is all gonna be very exciting. I'll do a separate video on Apple Intelligence. For now, I just wanna say that if you wanna get the most out of Apple Reminders, download my free Apple Reminders cheat sheet. The link is in the description below the video. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.